The year is 1071. The place, Sicily. Palermo, the largest and most important city in Sicily, has been under Arab rule for some two centuries. Possession of this opulent, strategically central island city has allowed Islamic civilization to dominate the Mediterranean, both militarily and commercially. But today, a new power has arisen in southern Italy. The Normans, Christian descendants of the Vikings, who have spread across the Mediterranean world, seeking adventure and wealth. Under the leadership of the cunning Robert Giscard, the Normans have come to dominate the southern reaches of the Italian peninsula. Indeed, they've just conquered the last great Byzantine city in the region, Bari. The Normans have also captured significant portions of eastern Sicily. Now, Robert has his eyes on Palermo, the great jewel of Sicily. The Muslim defenders of Palermo are aware of this and know that their rule is at stake. Can the wealth and power of Palermo withstand the attack of Robert Giscard and his fearless Norman adventurers? By the middle of the 11th century, Palermo, Sicily, is one of the greatest cities in all of Islam, outshone only by Cairo and Cordoba. Lost by the Byzantines in the 9th century, Sicily has become a focal point of the Arab world and over the last two centuries has been used as a springboard for piratical raids against Christian Italy. But in 1071, the Muslim rulers of Palermo are keenly concerned for their future. Several years earlier, in 1068, they lost an important battle against the Normans at Missil Mary. It now seems likely that the Normans will expand and threaten the wealthiest regions still under Arab control. Those portions of Sicily remaining to the Muslims are controlled mostly by the Zirids, a dynasty of North African origin. Meanwhile, the Normans of Southern Italy have just achieved their greatest triumph. In April 1071, Robert Giscard and his brother Roger of Outfill conquered Bari, the last great stronghold of the Byzantines in Italy. It's a remarkable climax to a journey that began with Robert Giscard arriving in Italy penniless, barely able to feed his own ragged band of knights. But Robert is an unusual man to say the least. His nickname, Giscard, means cunning and is fitting for his character. Now, as Duke of Apulia, Robert is the most powerful ruler in the region. Almost at once after his victory at Bari, Robert begins to prepare for an attack on Palermo. He sends his brother, Roger, to Sicily, while he himself begins to mass his fleet at Otranto. Bari, in particular, will be vital in contributing the navy for the upcoming campaign. Robert has granted generous terms to the conquered citizens of Bari, for he desires their enthusiastic cooperation in the assault on Palermo. Indeed, the expedition against Palermo, in Robert's view, will help to unify his Normans with his new Greek and Lombard subjects. Once enemies, the two camps can at last unite in a battle against their common foe, the Muslims of Sicily. Norman, Lombard, and Greek alike generally view the Arab rulers of Sicily as infidel invaders to be driven out for the good of Christendom. By early August, Robert Giscard joins his fleet at Reggio. Robert's naval force includes 58 ships, manned mostly by Greeks. Robert's Normans board the ships, and the fleet makes the crossing to Sicily. There, they rendezvous with Robert's brother, Roger of Outville, and his cavalry at Messina, the chief Norman city in Sicily. Roger, for some time now, has been Robert's right-hand man, although their relationship has often been tense. While Robert is cunning, distant, even arrogant, Roger is gallant and approachable, epitomizing the tall, comely knight who naturally rallies men to his cause. Robert has little use for revelry, but Roger prefers to make merry with his men, drinking hard with them and toasting to their victories. 
Although these differences sometimes lead to clashes, they're also complementary and have helped the two Normans gain much success together. At Messina, Robert and Roger lay out their plans for Palermo. The attack will be two-pronged. Robert, with the fleet, will blockade Palermo from the sea, and Roger and his horsemen will assault the city from the landward side. But Roger has come up with an idea that he thinks his brother will find most intriguing. Halfway down the east coast of Sicily sits Catania, an Arab-controlled harbor that has at times been an ally to the Normans against the Zirids. Roger's plan is to ride down to Catania, where he believes the rulers will give him a warm welcome. Roger will then request that the Catanians allow Norman ships to use their harbor. If the Catanians agree, Robert can enter the harbor with his vessels, at which point the Normans will then seize control of the city. With Catania secured, the Normans will be more secure in their attack on Palermo, for if it is left in Arab hands, Catania could be used as a launching point for a counterattack against the Norman siege camp at Palermo. Despite past alliances, Robert and Roger can't be sure of Catanian loyalty once the Normans threaten the most important city in Sicily. The conquest of Catania, while arguably treacherous, is undeniably practical and bears the signature of Norman cunning. Robert agrees to Roger's plan, and the operation is pulled off flawlessly. The Catanians are completely fooled, and their hospitality toward Roger results in the loss of their city to the Normans. Robert and Roger bolster Catania's fortifications, installing a garrison to hold the city. Then, they depart for Palermo. Roger, who is eager to visit his beautiful wife Judith at Troina, takes the overland route. Meanwhile, Robert travels by sea with the fleet. It's the middle of August. The Sicilian sun is blazing as Roger of Outville and his army ride toward Palermo. Their rear is protected by Serlo, Robert and Roger's nephew, who played an important role at the battles of Cerami and Missilmeri. Serlo will lead a small force to deflect any Arab counterattacks from the interior of the island. Roger lays camp some two miles east of the city, near the river Oreto, in a region rich in palaces, gardens, and orange groves. There is no opposition. The Normans seize control of the area, taking advantage of the abundant resources. But Roger and his men don't waste time enjoying the luxury. The castle of Yaya sits on the river Oreto, guarding the eastern approach to the city. Roger, who expects his brother Robert to arrive soon, recognizes this point as the ideal landing place for the fleet. Riding up before the walls, Roger taunts the Arab defenders, who emerge to fight. Fifteen minutes later, the Normans have made short work of Yaya's garrison, slaying and capturing all of them. Roger renames the castle for St. John and installs a Norman garrison. Next, Robert Giscard arrives with his fleet and the Christian ships move to block Palermo's harbor. Robert and his knights join with Roger's army, forming a great arc before Palermo. The siege has begun. The army threatening Palermo contains some 10,000 men, the largest force ever assembled by the Normans of Italy. The defenders of Palermo are ready. For years, they've been strengthening their city's defenses, walling up many gates and laying away supplies. They recognize that on their efforts rests the future of Sicilian Islam. For them, this is a holy war for the honor of their prophet and the defense of the Muslims. The fighting is intense. The Arabs of Palermo are hopeful, for in the autumn of 1071, 
a North African fleet, bolstered by some of the remaining vessels in the Sicilian Arab Navy, appears on the horizon. Robert at once commands all of his men, Normans, Calabrians, Bariots, and Greeks, to receive Holy Communion. Then, the Christians set sail to meet the enemy. The North African sailors put up a fierce fight. They'd canvassed their ships with red felt to repel projectiles. Slowly, however, the Normans gain the upper hand, the Muslims lose many ships, and at last, those that have survived break for the safety of Palermo's harbor. The Norman ships are in hot pursuit as the African vessels enter the harbor. Palermo's defenders immediately close off the port with their great harbor chain. However, Giscard orders his ships to drive forward, and amazingly, the Norman vessels crash through. There, in the port of Palermo itself, the Christians finish off the African navy. The defenders of Palermo are devastated. Disease and famine have begun to afflict the city. However, Robert Giscard suddenly feels pressed for time as well. He's just received news that back in his duchy, on the Italian mainland, a revolt has broken out, led by his nephew Abelard. Giscard is faced with a difficult decision. Should he call off the siege and let Palermo slip from his grasp, or should he fight on and risk his Italian domains? Giscard elects to stay. But he won't sit and wait for famine to reduce Palermo. Instead, he opts for a prompt attack. Palermo's upper town is defended by a fortification known as Alcazar, the fortress. Here, crowded markets enfold an enormous mosque protected by its own battlements. Robert selects this as the site of his attack. Dawn, January 5, 1072. Roger of Outfield dispatches his infantry to assault Alcazar. The Muslim defenders rush out through the gates in a desperate counterattack. Initially, the defenders are successful, hurling back the Normans through the raw force of their numbers and their fervor. In the critical moment, Robert Giscard charges in with his cavalry. A single powerful attack from a solid line of Norman horsemen breaks the Muslim defenders, who turn and flee. But as the defenders rush back for the safety of Alcazar, their comrades on the walls slam shut the gates to prevent the Normans from gaining entry. Suddenly, Palermo's most valiant defenders find themselves trapped before Alcazar's walls as the Christian cavalry thunders down upon them. It's one of the more poignant moments in the siege. The Arab warriors bravely meet their end, fighting to the last as the Normans slay them to a man. Nevertheless, Alcazar is still secure, the Normans still locked out. Giscard, ever cunning, alters his approach. With the Arabs so zealously defending Alcazar, he begins searching for portions of Palermo where the defense might be slackening. He finds it in Palermo's lower town, near the quarter known as Alcalesa, the administrative center containing the city's armory and treasury. Here, the walls are more sparsely guarded. In a rapid maneuver, Giscard launches an assault. The Norman knights raise their ladders and scale the walls. Quickly, Giscard's men throw open the city's gates, allowing Robert and his main force to rush inside. The defenders at Alcazar, horrified by the news, jump down from the ramparts and charge toward Alcalesa. There, in the narrow, shadowy streets, the Normans and the Arabs clash in a final, bitter battle. In the end, Norman swords prevail, and the streets run red with Saracen blood. 
Only a handful of wounded, exhausted Muslims managed to slip back to their few comrades still holding at al Qasar. When the dust settles, the Normans hold the lower town, while the Arabs still hold the upper. As the sun sets, Palermo's defenders come to grips with the harsh reality. They've lost. They've lost most of their men, and Giscard now controls Palermo's armory and treasury. Some want to fight to the death for the honor of their faith, but more practical voices prevail. A delegation is dispatched to Giscard. The defenders surrender. The Normans have won. Palermo, the jewel of the Mediterranean, Sicily's greatest city, has fallen at last to the Normans. In victory, Robert Giscard is merciful. He commands that the lives and property of Palermo's Muslims be respected. The conquered will continue living under their own laws and practicing their own religion so long as they submit to Giscard's rule and pay his taxes. In essence, Giscard grants Palermo's Muslims the same generous terms he granted to the Greeks of Bari. The Norman Duke understands the benefits of benevolence toward a conquered populace. He hopes to encourage loyalty and discourage future rebellion. January 10, 1072, Robert Giscard, along with his brother Roger, his wife Sigilgeta, and his Norman chiefs, makes his formal entry into Palermo. They parade through the city to the ancient church of St. Maria which during the years of Arab rule had been used as a mosque. Today, the church is reconsecrated as a Christian cathedral. The old Archbishop of Palermo performs a mass of thanksgiving in the Greek rite. This is a momentous achievement. Palermo, held by the Arabs for some two centuries, has at last been brought back under Christian rule. No longer are the Normans mere peripheral invaders, occupying a small corner of Sicily. They now dominate the island. Some portions of Sicily remain under Arab rule, notably Syracuse and Enna, but the Normans seem likely to capture these as well. The conquest of Palermo will have profound ramifications for the strategic situation of the Mediterranean. The Italian ports will be safe from Arab piracy, and the Christians will now project their power across the sea. <laughs>